G'day, day four of this engine swap and this D40 Navara thing here. Um, it's not a V8 conversion, it has already been converted, but we're converting another conversion into the conversion. So, putting a VK45DD in the rubbish bin and putting a VK45DE in the ute. So, let's have a look at where I'm up to now. So under here we're nearly done. I've got to put an oil filter on that, tighten the sump plug, put some oil in the motor, um, run the rest of the wiring harness underneath here and plug that all in, start a motor alternator, uh, crank angle sensor and all that sort of stuff. All that's all the same on this one. Um, so that will be all done very, very shortly. Strangely, the exhaust system, if you look at the balance pipe there on the left-hand side of your screen, you'll see there's an extra piece of metal in between the two flanges there. The, um, the exhaust system ended up being too narrow at the back of the car, so there's no flexi couplings or anything like that on it. Um, this must be some sort of discrepancy in the width of the cylinder heads at the exhaust flanges. They must be different on the DD and the DE. So when I've put the DE one on there, it's, um, it's wound up that the exhaust, you'll have to excuse all the goop hanging out, was, um, was hitting up here. On the chassis and in fact it actually doesn't look that hell of a lot better now even with my spacer but i'm giving that a good old jiggle jiggle it's not touching now so um this side's pretty good although it's a little bit to the passenger side of the vehicle ultimately once it's running and i know it's right um this this balance tube will just get the chop i just look it was a patch up job anyway i joined two pieces of tube so I'll just, um, I'll get some new flanges cut, laser cut. No sense in trying to grind this out of here. I'll um, just take that out, put it in my scrap stainless steel pile, make a new balance pipe, the correct width to get the exhaust sitting bang on. I'll take all this excess off here once it's dry. And look at that, it looks much nicer, doesn't it? I don't use gaskets on these flanges that I use. All they need is a little bit of high temp silicon and um, they seal quite nicely. I better get rid of that patch too. All you fussy guys will be moaning. Right, so um, 20 past 8 this morning, I rang our guys at Nissan King. Made a couple of phone calls, some other things I'll talk about in a second. And um, said, can I come down and grab a whole heap of bits? They look a bit busy. You can come down this afternoon. Um, I said, if we can get our hands on one of these and one of these. I can make some good progress and can probably even start the thing this morning, maybe. Um, might have been half an hour later, less than that. Uh, it takes that long to drive to the other side of town. And one of these turned up for me. So thanks very much to Nissan King and Shane. This bloody awesome service. It would have taken me longer to have driven from my house to there to get that and then drive back again than what it took for that to turn up here. So that's cool. Previous video, we discussed that. So I could, I could cut that off there and weld on an AN fitting on a bit of an angle and then get an, a tube adapter for the end of the hose and make that work. That would then fit in the engine bay and I could use that hydraulic pump. I would then have to try and mount that reservoir somewhere because the factory mount position won't work. And it starts getting a little bit yucky. And let's have a look at the, this is all brand new too some of this brand new stuff the d23 stuff so um let's have a look at the top of the engine bay and um we'll discuss some things going on there okay so the developments in this area are that i did a little more research For some reason i thought back in the day i swapped this radiator over to a petrol one because the fitting was in a better location because that hot fitting points across to the passenger side of the vehicle that way and um, that hot fittings on that side so I thought I'd swap that because I thought the diesels were around the other way that's actually wrong the diesel ones are on that side and interestingly enough the um, cold fittings on that side as well so that's actually not a very good solution um, design wise you actually want one fitting on the other side of the radiator to try and get nice flow evenly across the whole lot. But obviously they're not concerned about that and it hasn't been a problem. So 
they've done that. No big deal. Um, however, I've had organised for us a um, VQ40 DE powered D40 Navara radiator because that fitting is right there where they've actually um, the only thing they change on that is when they make the mold they put a little plug in there so if this was aluminium uh, I would be definitely fiddling with that and putting my fitting over there but so what that enables me to do is then come from there that's actually not the standard fitting I've fiddled with that I can come off here and go straight here make a quite a nice uphill get rid of all the air bubbles and stuff nice and tidy real simple real easy might even work with this this hose here do you think that'll work that's a brand new d23 hose it's rubber church sure, yes that's going to work that's just going to go that's going to go on there and i'm going to take the fancy cover off it and it's going to go chop it down shorter we'll go straight on there we're done so top hose thanks to paul at listen they go in the rubbish bin otherwise so they're going to get put to good use um then i've got our throttle so we can put that on here i've got to rewire it so that's changing that plug to the other plug that we've got and then we'll sort out our intake system that might be tomorrow um, we'll see how things go was someone talking about rats nests bro hold my beer Mm -mm -mm. so anyway that's all been unstitched and un unsorted don't have to uh, splice or join or anything like that we've we've got enough length for our injectors on the side here with the excess that was over there just pulled through so that's cool um tying in the wideband o2 sensor loom to run across there originally i think it ran down the back and over that way uh, as a separate loom uh, that's my fault i changed my mind quite late into the job and decided we were going to run wide bands pointing the finger at anyone but myself um so i'm going to actually pull all the insulation off absolutely everything and try and make it as tidy as possible just one single loom basically where i can um obviously we've got a lot of length here for our throttle and our air temp sensor because everything's moved so we're we'll doing a bit with that um i've got to find it i've got one i've got to find my pin out for this find my pin out for that and um then i can figure out which wires are on here i need to go onto which wires on there then i have to recalibrate that which will be interesting i haven't done one with a mtron this, this one's got an mtron kv eight by the looks of it so um yeah that'll be fun and i'll do a bit of a tidy up in here there's a couple of relays that were added later on due to things happening there's one of one of these relays is actually to run the air conditioning and one of them is to run uh what was i doing i can't even remember i think it was bypassing the ignition power supply and the body because we actually blew the fuse on that so i've bypassed that and run it through a relay so that that won't ever happen again and um yes fun and games so yeah rat's nest yeah there we are there's one it's not as bad as it could be that as it sits right there apart from the fact it's got no oil and no oil filter if i put the battery on and plug in a couple of things that are unplugged over here it'll start it won't run very nicely because it won't have a throttle so it'll run it like oh, a little bit of open there it might go to like 1500 rpm or something like that right it's absolutely going to buck it down in a second so i'll get this done hopefully without too much noise in the background Having to talk up it's getting quite loud uh, throttles wired up i now need to calibrate that the radiator's on its way, I believe. I've seen an email, so we've been invoiced. Radiator and a couple of fans. I'll have to get the water pump tomorrow. We'll run out of time for that today. As it sits right there, if I put the battery in it, and the key, calibrate the TPS, it should start, in theory. There's a couple of things to check first, though. I've got to check spark timing. Um, I've got to put an oil filter on it, fill it up with oil. 
it, technically it would start. It'd be a very stupid thing to do, but um, it's nearly going. Nearly, nearly there. Uh, obviously, all the wiring I've got to wrap that up and do it all properly. Um, will be tidier than what the original engine was, as you can see. There's no guff on the top there, and we've simplified the wiring harness. There's basically one across there, 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 one down around the coils, and same deal on the other side. I'll get rid of some of that yellow paint that's on stuff as well. Um, make it look better. Power steering reservoirs filled up, so we don't have horrible noises from that when we start the engine, which might be today, maybe. Hopefully. Does it make you angry that I um, literally made the air intake go over the top of the dipstick? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it's not coming out. It does actually come out. There you go. Piece of cake. It sits a little bit further around that way, if I'm honest. It makes it easier. Boom. Bada bing, bada boom. I think that's going to go black it can actually sit a bit further even that way and that makes it nice i think i'll do that black because it just kind of does kind of stand out a little bit there's not much choice about where it goes really it's got um it's got that angle happening there i was going to go and grab a stock standard nissan fuga genuine article they got a um what do they call it a bellows type thing corrugated bloody tube on them comes out here 90 degrees and comes over this way and comes here somewhere that was going to result in having to make a new air box basically or or put a big panel over here to cover up that hole and, it was, and then it's going to hit this bloody air conditioning hose that's here and all sorts of things so i flagged that and i just went oh i'll just go over the top boom done there that's that so our oil filter didn't turn up there's a bit of a accident with the order i said to put it on the shelf i think i didn't um, realize they wouldn't stick it with the other bits but the other bits are here so i've got a couple of fans and i've got a radiator and i'm going to get those into here now and while that's happening the filter will turn up um at which point i'm going to do my throttle calibration and uh put the battery well put the battery in do the throttle calibration and turn the key and see if it starts see what happens Top radiator hose. It's not quite all uphill. Well, nearly. It's got a little bit of a kink there. I guess I could give it a bit of a twist when I tighten it up. If I do that. Yeah, that'll do. Nah, why bother? Um, that'll be fine. If there's enough flow there, that'll push any air bubbles up there. No problem at all. And a little bit of braking or accelerating or whatever and you'll get rid of it. Nearly there. Oil filter's here. Okay, the juice is there, cranked it over, sounded okay, all lights gone out, throttle's working, I'm going to get brave and plug in the fuel pump and see if it fires up, so, uh, I've got a fire extinguisher there, <laughs> and there's another one handy, right, I'll actually, I'll just crank it a couple of times and check for fuel leaks and then we'll see if it'll go. Fuel pump works. Can hear the air coming through that. All right, all right let's have a look and see if we've got any Bernie juice falling out anywhere. That's all looking pretty kosher. Don't worry about all the wires that haven't got any insulation. We've been through all this. I'll sort them out later on. Here's one fitting that could potentially leak. Nada. Still have to replace this hose. That's on the low pressure side anyway. What do you reckon? Kicking in the gut? It's not going to start straight away because it's a dead head system. So it's bleeding to that point there. All this could potentially still have air in it. Once it's turning over and the injectors are opening, that's when we'll start to clear the air. So, genuine first attempt to start. Oh, 
that's not bad. It bloody nearly went, didn't it? What's she idling at? 500 RPM. Missing. I bet you it's this one. Bitch, that's that one, it's that dodgy. It's not that one. Actually another one just picked up, they'll come right. Nice and quiet, eh? I think we've still got one not quite right. Yeah, it feels like there's one down. Not that one. Not that one. Not him. Not him. We already did that one. That one's gone. That one's gone. Oh, it must be the back one, eh? She's on holiday. Could be the injector. Or something else I need to look into. But that's a reasonable result. I'll check that out, figure out what's going on. Probably the injector. Just needs some. Um, but it's like a better turn it off. No cool ones, isn't it? Yeah, so I shut it off. Um, I'll check the spark plug. And then we'll see if we're getting fuel in there. If we're getting fuel in there, then we're not getting spark. And then I'll look into why that's happening. But hey, not bad. Started basically straight away. One cylinder not firing. Uh, it's got compression. I know that. I checked that. So it's just going to be either no spark or no fuel. If it's no fuel, it's just going to be the um, injector, which I've got heaps of. They're actually the same injectors as what's in there. So I can just steal one off the top of that. It's like a five minute job to put that in there and then um, we wait for a water pump while we're waiting for a water pump I'll get my fan shroud on here a couple of fans it'll be just about on the bloody road mean all right that'll do for today that's probably quite enough it's um it's 4 30 that's enough footage boom there's my ugly bloody face again um pretty good eh happy with that it's um it, well it might not smoke straight away it's not smoking running okay at the moment so uh that'll do it will need a tune i was naughty and i didn't calibrate the throttle but it seemed to work so i'll get on to that i mean who knows i haven't applied any throttle and he might stick your foot on the throttle and it might go haywire so i will calibrate that um and we'll see how we're going we've got wideband o2s built into the ecu but um mtron kb8 so i can actually see whether the tunes in the ballpark or not didn't see any smoke black smoke it must be close it'll go it'll drive so yeah pretty happy all right cheers guys catch you later pulled that plug she's dry as a bone so we've got a dicky fuel injector no big deal like i say that's easy unfortunately i don't yeah yeah it's gonna make a mess isn't it gonna leak the fuel out when I um when I do that I'm going to double check that before I pull that fuel rail out I'm going to make sure we've actually got continuity to our ECU for our wires can't see why we wouldn't but double check it eh let's check it uh it could even be contact on that plug let's start it again give that plug a little bit of a jiggle like this dodgy one on the front here Let's see how we go. Just dirty contacts. Just dirty contacts. It's going now. Yay. Wonder what happens if we give it a room. Yeah, it didn't like that.
this. It's enough of it. It's a bit stinky. Cool! Oh, Ozzy Osbourne in the background. Sorry about that, Ozzy. Didn't mean to rip your music off. 